saw their first significant snow ever in their life. Yeah? Seriously, where are you from? Oh, yeah. From Spain, you said, right? Oh, Tennessee? <laughs> Same thing, Spain, Tennessee. Yeah. Anybody else, bro? Where are you from? Puerto Rico? All right. All right, listen. A couple things. Attendance sheets are going around. However, there's a new thing that we're doing. Sorry. See this, this attendance sheet right here? It's green. All the attendance sheets are white. But this one is green. Yo, hang on. Laura, Lauren, that's, bring that down. I, you need to start another one here. So here's the attendance sheets. They're white. That's for today. However, there's another one that's going around. And it's going to go around for the next three or four days. This is the master attendance sheet. The only people that are going to get this master attendance sheet today probably is this section and maybe half of that section. And on Thursday, we'll do another section. So at some point in time, we want to try to get everybody to sign this, okay? Cool? So, so you all are going to sign two attendance sheets today. All right, Mom. And, dude, it's a secret. It's a secret. Next thing, the video engagement assignments. You can use any video clips from any point since the beginning of the semester. So starting the next few classes, you're going to follow everything. It's your responsibility, just like it's your responsibility to make sure that your assignments got uploaded into Dropbox. So it's cool. So just keep that in mind. All right, I need four volunteers. I need two uh, Jewish students who have a connection to the Holocaust. Grandparents, great-grandparents, something. I need two Jewish students. You don't have to have a connection, but it's really nice if you do. Two Jewish students. And I need two Christians. Preferably, any Lutherans in here? Anybody who's Lutheran? Who's, who's Lutheran? Are you Lutheran, bro? What's that? You're Jewish? Are you connected to the Holocaust? Yeah, okay. You? Who else? I need... Are you Jewish? Do you have a connection to the Holocaust? Okay, come down. And I need two Christians. Are there any Lutherans? Are you a Christian, bro? Are you Lutheran? Oh, beautiful. Okay, you? And one more. I need someone who's like really, really, really Christian. Like you have a Jesus tattoo on your arm or you wear a cross or something. I need a, I need a Christian. Yo, there are a lot of you in here. Give me, I need a serious Christian. Sam, up top. Who's up got top, it? Up top, up top. Who's See got that girl it? Waving that? Serious Christian. Up top, Dude, Sam. Sam. Up top. Over the there. top. <laughs> Middle. All right, you're down. Wait, you're the Trump person. Oh, double whammy. Okay, good. We got a Trump Christian. Okay. Taylor is back. All right. So. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Come. Yo, everybody. Here we go. We're starting. So today actually is a really, really, it's a cool class. It's a really intense class. It's a really intense class, actually. So will be the next three classes. <clears throat> The next class, by the way, I'm calling Christian Sharia. And then the class next Tuesday is on radical Islam. So Christians, don't miss next class for sure. And Muslims, definitely don't miss next Tuesday. So what, what's, your, what's your name? Ray. Ray? Ray? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? I'm from outside Philly. Outside of Philly. And what's your, your Jewish, both parents? No, just my dad. Just your dad? And yeah. what's your connection to the Holocaust? Um, my father's, not my grandfather, but his entire family was killed in the Holocaust. Was killed? Most of his family, yes. Where at? Do you um, know? Some in Lithuania and then some in Germany. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Ray. Yeah. All right. Bro. Oh, my name is Andres. Andres? Yeah. Where are you from? Nice to meet you. Venezuela. Venezuela? Yeah. And you were Jewish? Yeah, both parents. Both parents? Yeah. 
And what's your connection to the Holocaust? Um, my grandfather, he was, he's a, survi a survivor from the Holocaust. He was like, a, like five years old, uh -huh. but he was like a Catholic family. They let his, my grandfather's family like to live there like for a year and they hid there like, yeah, for a year. And it was, they, nobody died then. And then they fled to Venezuela. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, Taylor, or bro. Is you, we'll go with you. I'm Matt. Matt? Yeah. And you are Lutheran? Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, outside Williamsport. Outside of Williamsport? There are a lot of Lutherans probably up that way, who, right? Who got Williamsport? Okay. Oh, oh man, there's two of you here. <laughs> All right. So, Lutheran, both, both parents? Uh, my dad was Catholic, but then after marrying my mom, he became Lutheran. So, your dad, yo, hang on. Talk, you got to talk right into the mic. My dad was Catholic, but then after he married my mom, he went to the Lutheran church. He went to the Lutheran side. All right, Taylor, what's, what's, you're Christian? Yeah, well, I was baptized Catholic, but then, like, I went to a Christian school. But then you became then, a real Christian. Yes. Yeah, like how, uh, just kidding, Catholics, just a joke. So, are you a serious Christian? Yeah, I, like, read my Bible every day. Oh, seriously? Uh -huh. Okay, good. All right, that's good. That's a serious Christian. Okay, uh, it's good enough, anyway. Well, it depends on how much you sin, because if you sin a lot, you got to read your Bible all day long. It's not just like every day. So, listen, one of the things, here we go, one of the things that I see a lot of is that people have a hard time with the perspectives and the ideas of other people because they don't take the time to really understand where they might be coming from. And so we're seeing this today in the U.S. with our politics. You know, people on one side of a debate, they can't even imagine people on the other side of the debate thinking one thing or another. And because they can't imagine, so the people over here are understanding what people over there are thinking, we, we just, we, we can be out of our minds just thinking, like, how could you possibly see, see it this way or see it that way? And one of the things that I like to talk about, and I think is really important for this class, is that you got to put yourself in the shoes of other people to see what it is that they see and how they see it. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put you in the shoes of Jewish people. And I'm also going to put you in the shoes of Christians. So Christians, I'm going to put you actually back in the Christian shoes, but from a different perspective and a perspective that often Christians don't think about. And this is preparing us for the next two classes. Okay, bro. So, first thing. At some point in time, and I'm, not a, I'm not a historian, I'm not a biblical scholar, but at some point in time, there came this idea in the Christian community that Jews were responsible for killing Jesus. And in the Christian perspective, Jesus is God, so therefore Jews are responsible for deicide, killing of the deity, killing of God. And once Jews, meaning, what's your name again, bro? Andres. Andres? Ray. And Ray. So at some point in time, the people represented, the ancestors of Andres and Ray, we're responsible for killing Jesus and killing God. Now, I don't, I'm, again, I'm not a biblical scholar, but I'm well-read and well-versed enough to know that this happened at some point. So maybe it's like there's this Justinian one in like 529 where we, we definitely first start to see this. Jews being responsible, Jews killed God. And then slowly it creeps into various versions of the Bible. There are lots of versions of the Bible. So your version of the Bible may, may well, today, Christians, your version may well not say Jews are responsible for killing God. Lovely, wonderful, because things have changed. But throughout history, most of history, the Bible, the New Testament Bible, has this idea that Jews killed God. And it had grave consequences for Jewish people. Imagine, imagine that a group of people killed your God. Imagine, whatever you are, imagine a group of people killed your God. And you, like these people right here, 
And I bring them in front of you. And I say, they killed your God. What should we do with them? What you think we should do with them is not going to be very pretty. And what we see in the history of Jewish people is a, quote, holocaust, which is a word that we only started to use in the mid-21st century, or 20th century, that actually was happening for many, many, many years. The treatment of Jews on the part of particularly Christians is really, really ugly. Really ugly. Now, mind you, the Christians, if you're thinking that those people over there were responsible for killing your God, you can understand how you all might really develop a hate for these people. And if people are telling you again and again and again, these people killed God. Well, most Christians throughout history are not taking a step back and say, wait a minute, hang on. Is that really the story? I thought it was the Romans that killed God. I thought it was Pilate that killed God. No, 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 it's Jews. And most Christians walk through life with this idea. Century after century after century, and when you study the history of Jews, it is the longest hatred the longest hatred that probably the world has ever known. I have experienced hatred of Jews, fear of Jews, bigotry of Jews in places you would never... I was deep in the Amazon jungle one time. Deep in the Amazon jungle. I took a boat in and I was in. This is back when I was doing research in the Amazon. And I came upon this village and I'm talking to people and somebody asked me, are you a Christian? And I said, yeah, well, I was baptized as a Christian. I always said that because you never know where you are and what people are thinking. Yeah, I was baptized as a Christian. And they said, well, your name is Samuel. It is Samuel. It is Judeo. Are you Jewish? It's like, no, I'm not Jewish. And the response is, gracias a Dios. Oh, thank God. And I'm like, dudes, you're like deep, deep, deep in the Amazon. Like, what do, you, what, do you, what do you mean? What are you talking about? It's like, where did this come from? So it's a long, long hatred. You may say to yourself, well, I don't know. I never saw that. I don't really understand it. I, yeah, because you never studied it. If you study it, and you don't have to study very far, you see the longest hatred. Okay? So let's go to the next slide. So this guy right here, Martin Luther... We're not doing history today, but I'm going to run through a couple things. Martin Luther is critical for Protestantism. Dude, Luther, this is the guy, this is the main dude. So here's what he wrote about Jews in 1519. Absurd theologians defend hatred for Jews. He was defending Jewish people. What Jew would consent to enter our ranks, i.e. become a Christian, enter our ranks, to convert, because Christians historically have been trying to convert Jews because they didn't follow Jesus. You get the story, right? But when he sees the cruelty and enmity we wreak upon them, that in our behavior towards them we less resemble Christians than beasts. Martin Luther said, I would rather, if I came back to life as a Jewish person, if I came back to life as a Jewish person, I would rather be a hog, a pig, than a Jew, given how we Christians treat Jews. Okay? Next slide. But, and let me tell you why Luther is important. If anybody who's Protestant in here, by the way, you're now Protestant, right? The Christians, Protestants, anyone who's not Catholic, Protestant, you owe it mostly to this guy, Martin Luther. Because Luther's turned against the power structure of the church, which said, look, the only way to get to God, to get to Jesus, like to read your Bible and you feel connected to Jesus, right? Bro, do you read the Bible? Occasionally. Occasionally? Okay. But you go to hockey games. Do you read it before hockey games or after, like praying for a win or anything? Okay. The only way to get to God is through us, the church. And by the way, it's going to cost you money. And so the church becomes this corrupt institution. And Luther sees this. And Luther says, no, 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 we can't do that. You can actually get to God by going around the church, you can have a personal relationship with God. Luther was one of the very first people to say this at a time when many people were starting to say it, but he was essential. Founded the Lutheran church, the most important early Protestant church. So Christians, without this guy, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be Christians. You'd still be Catholics. Well, not really. It would have happened eventually, but you get the point, right? Okay? So now Luther, are you following so I'm building this up. Luther at some point has a converting idea about the ancestors of these two people, your Jewish colleagues here. And then he has a different story. 
And he writes this book on the Jews and their lies. And let me read some of the things that Luther says about Jews. He says, they're nothing but thieves and robbers. Your ancestors, nothing but thieves and robbers, who daily eat no morsel and wear no thread of clothing, which they have not stolen from us. So your ancestors, dude, your guy, Luther, but they, they knew nothing, man, but steal from you. And what are we going to do, dear princes and lords, who have Jews under your kingdom, so that you and I can be rid of this, bro, unbearable, devilish burden, the Jews. What are we going to do to get rid of them? And you want to know what he said? Do you know? Okay, here's what he said. First, we're going to set fire to their synagogues. And we're going to bury and cover everything that won't burn. So that no man ever again has to see even a stone connected to Jews. And then second, we're going to raise their houses and destroy all of their goods. Third, I advise that all their prayer books and Talmudic read, writings and idolatry and lies and so on and blasphemy be taken from them. And fourth, I advise that their rabbis be forbidden to teach. You can't teach. You, uh, you, you insufferable Jews. Sixth, I advise that all cash and treasure of silver and gold be taken from them. And finally, here's another one. I commend putting, so this is the most, one of the single most important Christians ever. Again, Christians. You wouldn't be Christians without this guy. I commend putting a flail, an axe, a hoe, a spade, a distaff, or a spindle into their hands of the young, strong Jews and Jewesses. And let them earn by the sweat of their brow. Because you're just taking from all of us Christians. You're taking. Okay, so this is where we're going to go. So Luther makes this turn. Now, if he's making this turn, imagine all the other people that are saying the same thing about this devilish, insufferable race of Jews. All the other Christians, y'all, right? This is standard thinking, standard protocol. So here, check this out. You ready? Who'd that sound like? Those words. This is in the 16th century. Who'd that sound like? 1543, he wrote that. Who'd it sound like? Who'd it sound like? Next slide. That guy. Dude, Hitler, Hitler was just doing, listen, man. You know what Hitler did? He, Hitler put into practice what the founder of your church said that he should do. He just put into practice. This Christian who is so critical and so important. And by the way, I'm not bashing Christians. I'm not bashing Christians. So if you feel like I'm bashing Christians, please understand, I'm just telling a history. I'm just telling a history that most people don't talk about. But I'm going to give an opportunity. I'm going to come back. I'm going to swing back around because I, Christians, I got your back on this. All right? So here's Hitler. We tolerate no one in our ranks who attacks the ideas of Christianity. In fact, our movement is Christian. Our movement is Christian. You can say, oh, but Hitler wasn't a Christian. Not according to Hitler. Not according to the vast, 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 vast majority of Nazis and supporters of Nazism. They were all Christian. In fact, bro, really, from a Lutheran standpoint, they were pretty good Lutherans. Because they really were following Martin Luther. I mean, he, Luther didn't design and so on. Pretty nice. Okay? Are we good? You got it? Are you, are you, I'm, I, I'm, just, I'm beating you up, I feel like. <laughs> I'm fine. I mean, no, talk, talk I'm, I'm fine because, like, the way I, the way I see it, because I've, I've been brought in, I don't know much about the previous Christianity. Uh -huh. Like, I don't know about what happened back in World War II and all that stuff. Uh -huh. I only know about what I've been brought up with. Uh -huh. So okay. I, ho I hold no judgment, and I don't take offense Okay. So it's actually kind of interesting for me. Cool. Taylor, how about you? I'm just like kind of confused because it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible like that we should like kill Jews, you yeah. know? So, yeah. so where'd it come from? Where That's is it? what I'm saying. So yeah. All right. I don't feel offended by it because like my God never said that. That's Adolf Hitler who said that. Okay. So it's not so God placing those words into his mouth. That's him, okay. his own words. Yeah. 
So let me ask you a question. What, have you ever read the Quran? No. Have you ever listened to people who've never read the Quran talk about what's in the Quran? No. Oh, really? I hear people all the time talking about the Quran, and I'm like, have you read the Quran? Like, no, so people seem to think that the Quran says things like you should kill infidels, Muslims, right? You kill infidels and that sort of thing, right? Okay, there are a lot of things. Okay, but this is good. This is good, okay? We're going to come back. It doesn't say that. Lots of things don't say that. And lots of histories aren't known. But we imagine what those histories are. Okay? So there are lots and lots of histories of lots and lots of people. We have no idea what they really were, what really happened. And yet we imagine certain things about those histories. Just like this, right? You didn't know. You don't know. Like, whoa, okay. So what's it mean for your life then? What's it mean for how you see the world? What's it mean for your version of Christianity as an example, right? And so you want to know, like, okay, where did this come from? Okay? We'll come back to that. All right, so look. So here's the other thing. Next slide, bro. Here's the deal. You know, like, if I'm sitting here, can I just, can you move, can we move the chairs closer together? Brooke, can we, can three of us sit here together? Can we like all sit? Remember, I was, I was baptized as a Christian, okay? So if I'm sitting here as a Christian, and I'm thinking, just like you, Christians I don't know don't do this stuff. Christians I know, or Christians I know don't do this stuff, right? Christians I know don't call for killing Jews. Christians I know don't even call for treating people poorly, they don't call for killing Muslims. They don't call, I don't know, Christians don't do this at all. It doesn't seem like it. And yet it happens. And how did it happen? And so one of the things that's really interesting is all those people right there, all those people at that Nazi rally, they're all Christians. They're all Christians. And they're all participating in supporting what became this horrific, horrific holocaust of your ancestors they're all christians now they may not know it what they were doing they may not have been fully aware of what they were doing but it's all they're all christians are they all thinking this is in the bible this is what jesus said this is no it's not in the bible it's not what jesus said but for some reason, there is this ideology of Nazism that was able to grab on to Christian ideology somehow and bring these Christians along because you can say, well, they, none of them were Christians. Really? I think they would argue pretty hardcore that they were Christians. And maybe you could easily take some of the people and say, but you really weren't because you're really evil. But the vast majority of them, you're not going to be able to do that. And so... They are Christians. And what are they doing? And how are they doing it? And what are they bringing about? What are they bringing about? Okay? And now, what I want to ask you is, what about all the other groups in the world where really bad and evil things are happening? What about them? Are they responsible? Are you responsible? Who's responsible? Are these people responsible? So let's go to the next one. Oh, by the way, can we go back? You know, can I go back to Islam really fast? Because this is not, this is about Christianity and Jews. I hear people a lot say Islam is evil, Islam is a cancer, Islam teaches people to hate. Islam this, Islam that. You've heard that, right? You hear that? Come on, you hear it because you hear it from Trump every day. <laughs> and I'm like, what about Christianity? You know what I mean? Because there are really very, very, very few Muslims who participate and what are really the horrors that we're seeing perpetuated in the name of Islam? Very, very few. A tiny fraction. And very few Christians participated directly in the horrors that became part of the Holocaust and killing Jews. 
And yet, we don't blame the Holocaust on all Christians. We can look at all those people even. Millions and millions and millions of people. And we can say, oh really, they just did a rally. They didn't really do it. They didn't really. How is it then that we can have people stand up and say, an entire religion is a cancer? Like Islam. All Muslims do this. All Muslims do that. If we can say all Muslims do this, then I'm here to tell you all Christians do this also. There's no difference. It's all one or it's all the other. So here, look at this. So this guy, Juan Cole, he looked at all the violence in the 21st century. Political violence by religion. And he came up with this, the number that about 102 million people were killed by political violence. And the blue were the ones killed by Christians of European heritage. And the red were the ones killed by Muslims. Dude, can you respond to that? That's like it's European heritage that they're Christian. Like you, like, they're Christians of European heritage. But like, where? Like, do they say like, "Oh, I believe in God. Okay, like, well, I'm going to say, heaven." Okay, well, listen. No, 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 I got you. Hang on, hang on. No, I'm gonna hold you back. I'm gonna hold that. I'm gonna push you, and then I'm gonna back you up. Okay, but let me just push you right now. What percentage of them do you think weren't like really Christians? As though we're gonna be the judge of who really is or isn't. But what do you like? A real Christian that believes in God believes he like he sent Jesus that he died on the cross and that they're going to heaven. Like, is that what you mean by a Christian? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, and I'm talking about some of our your anse our ancestors who fought in World War II, or fought in World War One, or fought in the Vietnam War, or fought wherever who were Christians and went off and fought in war. I mean, that's what it is. It's just violence, political violence, going off and killing in war. This doesn't mean killing innocent people necessarily sometimes it is it's just killing 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 it's a slaughter it's a christian slaughter the 20th century was a christian slaughter century christians killing and killing and killing and killing and killing and killing so today we can say wow it looks like muslims are really out of control and my god oh my god this is really crazy christians don't do i heard yesterday i was watching a video of a general in the u.s military saying you know it's really interesting i never hear Jew, I never hear Christians standing up and, and saying, holy Jesus, and then slaughtering people with machetes or something. But how is it that we can hear people say, Allahu Akbar, God is great, and then start stabbing people? And I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe that's the new thing. But if we just look back a little bit, it's the Christians killing and killing and killing and killing and killing until you could hardly spill more blood. And the Christians, we can sit back as Christians and say, oh, 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 we're not like that. We don't do that. We're not about that. Really? Talk to their ancestors. Centuries upon centuries of bloodshed and violence and hate. Century upon century. You get what I'm doing, right? I'm putting you in the shoes of somebody else. So that you can never ever listen to people like this general or whoever it is talk about this ideology or this religion being a cancer without saying, actually, uh, Christianity was a cancer also. And like, whoa, my gosh, maybe. I don't really know. I'm like, you see. Okay, do you, want to, do you have a response? Do you have a response? Do you, go ahead. Go ahead. Give me, do you have anything? You don't have to. You got to talk in the mic. You don't, don't have to, though. You're good. I, like, I just, this is different because it's war. It's not like you're talking about people going out and, like, me pulling out a gun and, like, starting to shoot, like, random innocent people. Yeah. It's a war. Okay, okay. That's what I'm saying. No, no, it, no, dude. Dude, no. good point. Good point. Dude, does someone ever back on that? That's a really, really good point. That's a great point. It's different because it's war. Okay? And, and. I will remind us. And I don't believe that all the people in the Holocaust, like, it says that they're Christ Christians, but it's, n like, I don't think every single one of them is going home and reading their Bible and being like, I believe I'm going to heaven. Yeah, I, d I doubt. I, listen, I doubt anybody who could participate deeply in, I, if there is a Christian God, okay? And if Christians get up to the, with God, 
All right, next, come on, let's go. And you directly participated in killing the ancestors of your classmates here. I think God is going to be like, hang, hold tight a second. Wait, you want to get in where? You want to come where? Let's have a come to Jesus conversation real fast. That's okay? what I'm saying. But I'm not going to judge that. 102 million, 100, that's a lot of people. <laughs> I'm not saying that that was right. At all. No, I got you. I got you. No, this is good. Thanks. W but. Would you say that the Christians who were Nazis were extremist Christians? Much like currently the people who are doing these terroristic acts are extreme versions of but it doesn't Muslims. say anywhere in the Bible that they should kill Jews. So no, why no, would they be that. extremist Christians? No, stay right there. No, no, it doesn't say anywhere. Stay right there. Stay right there. That's a really good point. Okay? Now, here's what I want to say. Some of you might say, well, these are wars, right? These are wars. And it doesn't it's make it right. It doesn't make it right. No, it doesn't it right. make it right. It doesn't. But they're wars. Well, I would also say, and that people weren't fighting to support or justify a Christian ideology. Whereas Muslims today, Muslims today, it seems like are mostly fighting to support an Islamic ideology. However, what I would say is actually most of the wars today in which Muslims are fighting are really not any different than the wars fought in the 20th century by Christians. Fighting over resources and fighting over power. Okay? Resources, power, resources, power. Okay, so here, let's go to the next one. Hey, by the way, we're going to take a, this is a quick little break right here. I just want to show you something that's pretty cool. You, you, you want to, you two, you want to turn around. So see that dude right there? That's my grandfather. Okay? 1910. What do you notice about the photo? Swastika, right? Well, what's off on the picture? And I realize I'm asking you to think about dates in history. What's off about the photo? It's too early. 1910, the Germans didn't start using the swastika, the Nazis, until the late 30s. Right, 1910. So, next slide. So, the swastika is actually a Sanskrit symbol for well-being and good luck. So, look at this. Here's like fine-eating California fruit. Here's Coca-Cola being sold with the swastika. It's pretty cool, right? It's a Sanskrit. Sanskrit is one of the oldest Indo-European languages. And this is one of the oldest symbols of good luck. So look at, look at this napkin here. Next one. Playing cards, by the way. Here, check this out. U.S. Army. It's a World War I airplane from the United States with a swastika on the side for good luck. Yo, isn't that cool? Isn't that really cool? And now you can never use that symbol anymore because... It's just like you can't name your kid Adolf unless you want him to grow up to be a cult figure or something. Next slide. Uh, so listen, here's what I want to do. You can turn around. I'm going to do a trigger warning right here. Um, what I realized, I used to show footage from the Holocaust, and then I kind of stopped because it seemed as though lots of people have seen it. But in fact, what I find is that most people really don't see footage from the Holocaust. World War II Holocaust. Right? We really don't see it from Nazi Germany. And I feel like we need to show it. To me, of a certain millennial generation, really don't understand the nature of what happened. So, trigger warning. However, let's watch this video. So you, got, you can turn your chairs around, okay?
Listen. Follow me here. Christians did that. Christians did that. Okay? They were Christians. It doesn't say in the Bible anywhere to do that, that it's okay. It doesn't matter. They were Christians. Okay? And if I were there, I would say, well, you're not really a Christian, but I'm not there. And most religious people do things that are sinful according to their religion. Christians did that. So when a Muslim or a group of Muslims does something that's really evil, well, hang on, let me take a step back. But you would say, and you would say, and every single person in this room would say, but not the Christians, every single Christian in this room would say, but not the Christians that I know. My Christian family and my Christian friends wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do this. And you would be right. Your Christian friends and family wouldn't do this. Yet, maybe they will. But they didn't do this and they wouldn't do this. Okay? Yours wouldn't. There's over 2 billion Christians in the world today. And back then, there were a lot of Christians. Christians did that. So here, when Muslims do something really evil, like something really, really evil, and we say, Muslims, look what the Muslims are doing. Look what they're doing. Look at that. Look at that. Muslims all over the world are saying, just like the two of you would say, but Christians aren't doing, those aren't Christians. They're, no, no, they're not Christians. My Christians don't do that. We Christians, we don't do that. Muslims all over the world are saying that. Can every Muslim right now in the room stand up really fast? When you say, when you say Muslims are, do, Muslims are killing, Muslims are slaughtering, Muslims are Muslims are Muslims, and we hear that, and our leaders are saying that, and people are saying, these people are all saying exactly what the two of you are saying. They're saying, Muslims aren't doing, those people aren't Muslims. They're not my people. They don't represent us. Those are somebody over there, somewhere else, but they're not part of this. So you're doing what I would do here. Can we move, move closer together? Let's keep standing for a second. So as, have a seat. You all, Muslims, stay. As Christians, and I'll be a Christian because I'm baptized, I'm going to say, we, that is not Christian. And every other Christian in the room will say, oh, yes, yes, you're right. I agree. That's not Christian. Oh, definitely. That's not Christian. I'm here to tell you that Muslims all over the world are saying those aren't Muslims, including all of your classmates here. All of these Muslims are saying those aren't Muslims who are committing that slaughter. And Muslims all over the world are saying, yeah, that's right. Those aren't Muslims. Yep, that's right. So, Christians, if we extend that to us, if we want to extend it to us, those aren't really Christians. Our Christians don't do that. Us Christians don't do it. Muslims all over the world are doing the same thing. They're saying the same thing. They're saying it's not us, man. Why do you keep looking at us? It's not us. It's this, it's this small fraction of crazy people. Just like these Nazis who put people in. You saw the video. Who could do that? Who could do that? What kind of a human being could do that? You watch ISIS and they chop somebody's head off. And they say it's in the name of Allah. And you say, who could do that? Who, how is that possible? That a human being could do that in the name of their God? How could Christians do this in the name of their God? It's the same thing. If we want it for us, we have to extend it for them. It goes both ways. You got to see it both ways. It's part of the whole picture. So all of these Muslims here, it's like, man, we got you, y'all. Right? When you see in that stuff, it's like, we got you. And there were Christians all over Germany that were saying, you Nazis, that is not Lutheran. That is not acceptable. It is, but it's not. It's like, it's not Christian, but they did it anyway. That's where we're at. So now we just want to build these bridges. 
cool? We're building bridges. Okay, thanks everybody. You guys get that. Do you, do you, wanna, do you have anything to say? You want to respond, either of you? It's heavy for a Christian to go. Look, I really applaud all Christians. If you're going with me on this, I applaud you tremendously because it's not easy. But understand, I'm not saying it's all Christians. I'm not saying it's you. I'm not saying it's... I'm just asking you to offer the same to other people what they offer back to you. Or what we want for ourselves, I guess, is what I want to say. You cool? You got anything? We good? Okay, so now, do you all want to say, what do you, can you say something? <coughs> you're saying, ah, just what you're hearing. When you watch the video, what do you see? Yeah, it's really sad, like, that happened. And, like, many people that were innocent, that, that were, like, hated or were, like, killed for nothing just because a crazy guy like didn't like them. It's like really sad. And but I, and what I'm saying is, it's not just a crazy guy. It's actually about 14, 15, maybe even 16 centuries of a hatred, of an ideology, that culminated in this period in time. Yeah. And nowadays, we're still like hated in many places. Yeah. Do you Do you want to say? Um. I would just say that like. You can look at that footage and say, oh, that's bad, but there comes like, and say like, that looks painful, but like understanding how that actually must have felt, like being starved until you look that way, that's like a whole other level of torture that I feel like people don't try to fathom when they watch Holocaust videos. They watch and they go, wow, that's terrible, but it's like, could you imagine being starved for months until you look like that and still having to get up and work and live with some type of hope in the back of your head that you're gonna get saved? You know, oh, and watching your friend right, like, taken away. I would say, because I know, like, I've seen that footage a million times in my life, right? But I know a lot of people haven't. So I just want to make sure people understand, like, the gravity of that. And I'd also like to say that I see kind of a trend coming back with the hate towards Muslims that you saw with Jews. Like, the dehumanization before things get worse. I'm not saying it's heading in that direction. I don't know where it's heading. But... I see the same type of mentality forming, and I don't understand how other people don't see it. If you've taken a history course or any type of genocide course, it's pretty apparent that there are the same signs, like it's coming full circle kind of, but towards a different people this time. Yeah, I would just, I would back off that, what you just said right there, and that's just fine. say that there, it, maybe it's apparent that there are some parallels. There are some parallels, that's fair. Yeah, yes. yeah. I agree. Okay. Hey, can we, go to the, can we go to the next slide? So let me just say, we have this idea, the United States. So when, the things, when, it, when this was all coming down against your people, we have the idea that the United States, you know, we really stood up and we moved forward. Listen, there's so, much, there's so many good things coming out now. that are. That we've, we've had many books, lots of research, and they just see more and more of all the ways in which we didn't reach out. Your ancestors, when they were fleeing, whether it's to Venezuela or the U.S. or wherever, we didn't reach out. And we didn't reach out and we didn't support them and we held back and we hesitated because of the anti-Semitism. That the United States wasn't right there. Yeah, we joined World War II and we fought the Nazis, but it wasn't to save the... Saving Jews was a part of it, not the dominant part. Look, for example, this is the SS St. Louis, 1939. I think it was... I think it was 1939, yeah. The Voyage of the Dam, killing, carrying 915 of your ancestors. First went to Cuba, from Europe, from Germany, left, refugees, fleeing the Holocaust. First went to Cuba. Cuba wouldn't let it dock, wouldn't let it port. The U.S. was largely controlling Cuba at the time, by the way. Then it came to Florida, it wanted to dock in the United States. We knew what was going on at this time in Germany in the killing of Jews. And the U.S. said, no, you can't dock here. When they tried to dock in Florida, the U.S. military boat actually shot a cannon across the bow of the ship, making sure it would not dock, forced it back to Germany. 20% of the people on that were killed by the Nazis. 
We didn't open our doors wide and say, come in. We didn't. Anti-Semitism is deep, y'all. It's deep, 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 deep in this Christian nation. Here, go to the next one. <clears throat> Catholics in here. I don't know if you studied the Second Vatican Council. This took place in Rome. But it's where they brought together all the bishops and the cardinals to have a real come-to-Jesus conversation for the church. About 2,100, 2,200 people, I think. And here's what they removed from church doctrinal teachings. They removed it. 1965, the Catholic Church finally said Jews weren't responsible for the execution of Jesus. Took them all that time. They finally removed from their core teaching, Catholics, the idea that all Jews who are currently living are also responsible for the death of Jesus. 1965. Y'all, that means like your parents, who are probably about like my age, right? When your parents were born from the Catholic Church, which is clearly Venezuela, your parents were responsible for killing Jesus. Catholic ideology. Dudes, you, you know how deep hatred of Jews is? That until 1965, Catholics taught as core teaching, Jews are responsible for killing Jesus. Like, oh my God. And God rejected Jews. God rejected you all, right? You get that. Because you killed Jesus. So here, let's go to one more. Check this out. This guy right here. Anyone know this guy? So here's the deal. He's one of a gazette. Do you know this guy? I've heard the name, but I've never watched him preach. You, you wouldn't know this guy. You're a Lutheran. All right. So listen. This guy talking about converting Jews because the key is still to convert you all, right? Christians, you never give up on Jews. Right? Well, you, you don't care because you're a Lutheran, but you, you're a real Christian. So like free, just kidding, Lutherans. All right. So the issue is, we still, we Christians, real Christians, we don't give up on them, man. We still, we're going to bring you on. We're going we're gonna to bring you over. You're going to bring it to the bright side. So you got all sorts of people like this guy who's like, nah, we're going to convert the Jews. And there's a couple ways you can do it. A couple ways. Ready? One is we can do like the, like the fisherman approach. We can just like cast the lures over there. <laughs> And we just, but hey, but Jesus loves you and Jesus is wonderful and you can have a personal relationship with Jesus and all these like really lovely things and try to bring them over to this side. That's the fisherman approach. That's grace. But what he said, and I want to read this actually. Ready? Here's what he said. This is just recently, by the way. This is very, this is just last summer, actually. I think it's when he said that. So he says, And the Lord said, and the Lord says, if they don't respond to grace, you Jews, if you don't respond to grace, I'm going to raise up the hunters. The hunters. We're going to call in the hunters. The image of the hunters, man. The hunters, like the hunters after the Jews, right? And the most faith. Because whether we use grace or we use violence, it's the same thing. We either bring you over or we kill you. That's the history of the relationship with Jews. And so this guy says, if they don't respond to grace, I, as he's giving his sermon, I'm going to raise up the hunters. And the most famous hunter in recent history is a man named... Named a threat. Like, listen, he wanted, here, can I say it in real, I'm going to say it in words that we can all understand. Listen, motherfuckers. <laughs> you either come over here because you see the light, or we're going to come after you. Hitler came after you, we're coming after you. You either come here, or we're coming after you. That's that guy, right? Pastor Mike Bickle. Oh, you want to know who Pastor Mike is, where you might have heard him? Go to the next slide. Because he endorsed this guy for president. So this guy responded. So can you blacken the screen real fast? So this guy 
says, so people, especially in the Jewish community, said, Ted Cruz, this guy is threatening to commit another holocaust on Jews. If they don't convert to Christianity, you must reject his endorsement of your presidency. And Cruz thought about it, I don't know for how long, I mean, who knows, whatever. It doesn't matter, but here's what he said. I'm grateful for Mike's dedication to call a generation of young people to prayer and spiritual commitment of killing Jews. Heidi and I are grateful to have his prayers and support. With the support of Mike and many other people of faith, we will fight the good fight against Jews. Finish the course, kill them all, and keep the faith. It's not funny, actually. You know why? I'm actually not, I'm, I'm truly not trying to be funny. The problem is this. He is a president, a, a candidate for the presidency of the United States, and he's threatening, he is being endorsed by and accepts the endorsement of a man who's threatening to kill Jews. And you said, it doesn't feel like it's over. Feels like it's still here. How's it feel now? This is a guy, the pre guy running, he's a senator, by the way. Evidently, he must know that the hatred of your people is deep enough among his Christian base that he can actually not reject the endorsement, and it's, actually, and it's a good thing. It's good for him. Because apparently, he must have this idea that more people hate your people than tolerate or love your people. He's not pulling that out of his rear end. He knows. He's a smart guy. He knows. He's got a law degree from what, Princeton or something? He's a really, really smart guy. He knows. He knows what the hatred of Jews is. Can you respond to that? How do you feel now? You said he felt a little scared before. How do you feel now? That doesn't really surprise me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, growing up Jewish and stuff, you, see, you can feel the anti-Semitism some, from some people and you know it's still there, like, in the subconscious, so that's not surprising at all. Not surprising. I think that, like, many people can be anti-Semitic because, like, they've been taught like that in their homes or because of self-convenience, maybe. Um, and, like, I felt it many times in Venezuela, in many places across the world and you just have to like let it go and just it's something that we like live with every day so mm -hmm. can you can the two of you respond to this actually how do you feel about like, I know you don't like Ted Cruz right I, man that's fine you probably don't like Ted Cruz either but that doesn't matter he's a senator in the United States he's a senator in the Republican Party that that doesn't matter he could be a Democrat how do you, what, is, what about that, that these people in these high power positions are actually threat, are accepting the threat of Jews, killing it's, Jews? It's sad. Obviously, I don't agree with that at all, but it's not right. I agree that it's wrong. He do you think, be do you saying think most, that. Do you think most Christians agree with it? I would think so, because if you're... No, agree with him? With oh, no, no. Yeah. So you're, most Christians, you think, would reject Ted Cruz accepting this guy's endorsement? Like we talked about in the last class, people like to look past like certain things and I know Christians that support Ted Cruz and I'm sure like nobody knows every single thing that Ted Cruz has said. Nobody knows everything that who's he, he's endorsed. Yeah. So it's, you can't say that. Mm -hmm. But I agree that if people, like I didn't know that about Ted Cruz. So now you just have another reason to dislike him. Sure. Listen, but what you just said right there is a really cool statement. Did you all hear that? It's what I said last class. People overlook the things that we just decide we want to overlook, or maybe we don't see it. How many people who support Ted Cruz even know about this? How many people who support Donald Trump even know most of the things that Donald Trump says? Most people don't even know. Like, ah, whatever, right? He says so many crazy things, it's like, ah, who cares? How many people support Hillary Clinton that don't know all the things she don't said? Don't know anything about Hillary Clinton, like telling the environmentalists they need to get a life. Dude. Hillary Clinton told all you environmentalists you need to get a life. She's going to support fracking, so get lost. It's like, okay. Bro, do you have a thought on that? When you see your two classmates here, and you see that a minister, hang on.
when you see a minister who's pretty well known and significant, significant enough that Ted Cruz would accept, thinks that it's better to accept his endorsement than not, how do you feel about your classmates here? And they're saying it's, it's scary being Jewish. And I agree with them. It is scary. What do you want to say to them? And I Can mean, you say I, something to them? I feel for you guys because I, don't, I can't imagine what you guys have gone through, what your ancestors have gone through, nor would I really want to imagine because that, just, that would make me feel like it wouldn't make me feel good. But for a senator to accept a endorsement from who I think would be a somewhat radical minister, and I say that lightly, um, I think he would probably be, I think this happened, I don't know when it happened, but I would assume that he's in such, he's in so deep over his head that he's taking any endorsement he can get. Yeah, so, probably so. So he's blindly following, he's blindly accepting whoever without really looking at what they've said. Yep, I got you. So, and, and yeah. you're not alone, by the way, because Ted Cruz also thinks that Islam is a cancer, so, you know, you're good. Judaism's a cancer, although you won't say that publicly, but, you know, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, he's in over his head, so he'll take anything. But really, anything? So how far do we go? Here, go to the next slide. Take it, here, you all, you said you were, you, you're, you can be a little bit afraid, some little? Well, look at this. So here at the top, we have Muslims, right? So don't fall victim to Jewish propaganda, you know, the whole thing, right? There's some film that came out. And then, look, here's some Muslim women. God bless Hitler. It's like, okay, so we can pick that out. God bless Hitler, other Muslims. Ah, but look at the down right. You know who those people are? Those are German soccer fans. You can go pretty much anywhere in Germany and find swastikas, even though they're illegal in most countries. Not Germany, I mean in Europe. And the right and the extreme right is coming back in Europe. It's coming back hardcore. And, they, and you know where they go? You know where the extreme right in Europe turns? Even the Christians and non-Christians, you know where they turn? Right there. Muslims and Jews. They can't get rid of that, this, this hatred of Jews, man. We can't get rid of it. We can't get fucking rid of it. It's still there. Look. And then Israel, the new Nazis. It's so like, y'all, right? Like, frankly, Muslims. Muslims. Or those of you who critique Israel, have a problem with Israel, the politics, the existence of Israel, or whatever the case is, those of you who do, look at that. Look at that. Dude, it's like you all, I, it's not over. It's not over. Do you talk about that in your families? And Like, how do you talk about that? I think it will never be over. Like, there will always be anti-Semitism or people that hate the Muslims or people that hate the, the Christians. And we talk about it every day because, like, many times a day or like how many times a day but many times we've been a victims of anti-semitism and yes yeah, i told you before like we just go on like it makes you stronger because like you know that you have to be like united and like you have to Dude, you got that hang on let me cut you off yeah. do you hear what he just said you have to be united you have to be united you see that that's key united if the hatred is still there, can you go to the next slide? Look at, look at this slide. You see, want to see Israel right here? So, so here you got all these Muslim nations around here. There's Israel right there. Right there. United. You understand how Israel came to exist, right? You watch the video. You see what happened. And you say like, dude, this, this, the hate, it's not going away. And Israel comes into existence. How could it not come into existence, man? How could it not, really? And not all Jews support Israel, right? Because the ultra-Orthodox, the idea is that God gave Israel to the Jews. So the real extreme conservative Jews, like the really Orthodox Jews, say God didn't give Israel to the Jews in the 20th century. The UN and other countries gave Israel to the Jews. See, it's really weird when you see all these really orthodox Jews who are supporting Palestine or opposing Israel, right? Nonetheless, look at this. Look at that. 
There it is. So those of you who really don't understand Israel, maybe now you understand a little more. It doesn't take Israel off the hook, right? Because, go to the next slide. I want to put this up. No. Oh yeah, here's Israel right here. Here we go. Here's the West Bank, the land that's now been designated for Palestinian, as Palestinian territory in the Gaza Strip. And by the way, I, if you go to the next slide real fast. Oh. Oh, I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah, I do. I'm just going to put you on the spot. Can I put you, the two of you on the spot real quick? Do you, how many of you are Jewish, by the way? Raise your hands. Okay, I want, to put, I want to put all the Jews in here on the spot real fast. There's another story that many Jews have. And that story is that at the time that Israel was created, there was really nobody living there. It's mostly barren land and so on. And that's a story that's very similar to the story that Americans have about the land here. That nobody was here, but Native Americans were here. All of the land was populated in the Americas. People were living here. There were Jews, there were Muslims, there were Bedouins, there were all sorts of people, right? Here, go to the next slide. These are actually photos that hang in my house. I got this in, in a photo shop in old Jerusalem. See, look at the Bedouins here. These are all Arabs, right? They're Muslims. This is the, before the creation of Israel. And so Israel also has to have a, st Israelis also have to have a story that says there was nobody living there to make it okay to move into somebody else's to land. It's some people are occupying, not all of it, but much of the land is being occupied. And so now it's being occupied in a different way. And so it's interesting how these stories go in multiple directions. And the reason I'm saying that and Jewish students, the reason I'm saying that is because in fairness to the disproportionate power in this relationship between Jews and Palestinians, there is disproportionate power. That's a story that also has to be told. Dude, you ready? Christians, can you, do you have any final words that you, we have five minutes left. I think it's just like really weird how everybody can sit here and be like, oh, these Trump supporters, they have so much hate, so much hate. And then you look at Twitter and everybody's hating on me because I'm a Trump supporter. And that's Dude. the problem. Like you all have so much hate. Dude. Like I don't hate anybody because they support Hillary Clinton. Dude. Dude. Right or wrong? Can you stand up real fast? Yo, here you go. You ready? This is Taylor, Trump supporter. Anything that Taylor says, you can come up with some reason to not like it. If you don't like Trump, dude, direct all, you ready? I got your back. Direct all your hate at her right now. Just stare at her and direct all your hate. Got it? Just do it right now and get it out of your system. Are we good? You got, are you guys hating on her? Do you need to do it too? Okay. Okay. You got it? Because listen, man, if you can't, see, here's the deal, right? You actually give the greatest lesson right here. Because if you can hate you, if people can hate you, then I can hate them. No, nah, not only can you, <laughs> no, 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 no. But if everybody's they can saying, hate, have an open mind. How, this girl doesn't have an open mind. Like, who, it, like, dude. you're just hating on me. Also, have dude, an dude. open mind. No, 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 no. I've, hang seen on. The, I've taken no, no, three no, Holocaust on. classes. Hang on, Thank you. No, no, no. Hang on, hang on. Guys. No, hang on, hang on. Dude. No, no, no. I don't, I don't, see, I don't blame you, okay, like, because I would... Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yo, yo, listen up, listen up. Are we cool with my armor on you? Yeah. Okay, listen. Y'all, look. We still have look. three minutes, guys. If you, if you can't not direct dislike or hatred toward your classmate named Taylor, I can almost guarantee that if this was 1938-39 in Nazi Germany and you were Lutheran and Christian or whatever, you'd be hating on their relatives, man. You'd be hating on their relatives. Because your whole life you've been taught to hate their relatives. And you have no reason to hate her. So my question then is, what, what kind of people are you, man? What kind of people are you? You know what I mean? 
Really, like, what kind of a people are you? Dude, dude, thanks for saying that, by the way. Do you have a final thing you want to say? Everybody gets just, one final comment real fast. Yo, but you got to... Just, I, I applaud you for standing up in front totally. of 700 people. Because I sure as hell wouldn't do that. I sure as hell didn't think I'd come down here and talk. But, yeah, yes, I'm guilty. I have hated on people. I, have, I will admit that. But this is a new year. And I know, I know, that sounds completely... Dude, right, it's a it sounds new completely universe. Rhetorical. It's, in, a, it's a new universe. But all I'm saying is, don't y'all think that this is a, a time that we should be rallying behind each other and not hating on each other? Or just rallying behind each other. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Not Asking hating to on rally each other. behind Trump might be a lot. That, yeah, that, that, that's How about just rally that's around each other? But rally behind each other and don't give a damn about what people say or think. That's a good thing. All right, you too. Yeah. Hang on. Hold on. Yo, we have. I we have two minutes. And in fairness to, can we just have a moment? Seriously. You know, this the Holocaust was really one of the most. I think it's one of probably the most just the way it was carried out, one of the most horrific things human beings have ever done. Do you, can, do you have a final comment that you'd like to say? Yeah, Sam, that you've talked about the Holocaust, like about the bad thing of the, of the Holocaust, about Hitler, and about the, like the million of Germans that follow Hitler. But I think like there's something that's left out of the picture many times, and like in my family was, is very present, of all the, the Catholic people, who were a small portion, but they did, they risked their lives because if yep. they were, like, yep. they hid the Jews in their homes and if the Nazis found out, they would be killed also and sent to the concentration camps. And so my point is that there's always gonna be hate everywhere, but like there's always some people love. that, yeah, that are like, are good people and that have their values in, yeah. yeah. I would just say um, before you like take a anything anybody says and think it yourself to try to understand other people. Like I think especially Jews, nobody goes out of their way to learn about Judaism or Muslims. It might be coming about now, but it hasn't in the past. And I think it's really important. I understand Christianity and I've to see people tell you about them isn't actually what's written in their scriptures. And I also think that we all should rally behind each other as well. It's important to care about the people around you regardless of cool. what they think. Yo, thanks, man. All right. Yo, uh, so next class is Christian Sharia. Hey, thanks, dog. I need a song. Yo, thanks. <laughs> you guys did a really good. No, it's good. Nice.